our spacecraft, our Jeep Liberty that we're using to tour the solar system today. At traveling about 60 miles per hour, it's doing about 60 astronomical units per hour. So it's going about one astronomical unit per minute, 93 million miles per minute. So it's going well over a million and a half miles per second. That's about maybe six times the speed of light that we're traveling up through the uh, main solar system model. We're about halfway out right now at my shirt sake at Saturn. You know, we got the likeness of the shirt in there with <laughs> the planet as well. And we have Astro Dog in the back as well. She's along for a tour, of course. Uh, she's quite the dog about the blogosphere. So. All right, greetings from the town of Bridgewater in Aroostook County, Maine. We are currently at Uranus on the Maine Solar System model at 19.5 miles away from the sun and the university. That's uh, about 1,784 million miles away. The model itself is about 22 inches in diameter. And Uranus takes about 84 years to orbit, it has 27 moons, and it was discovered by William Herschel in 1781. Uranus was actually one of the first planets that was discovered. The cool fact about the planet Uranus is actually it's actually 90 degrees tip, and they actually made the model to reflect that. It's tipped over 90 degrees uh, inclined to the ecliptic, so it rotates on its side. No one knows quite why Uranus formed that way. The, the inclination and tilt of it is one of the most extreme. All right, solar greetings. We're in the town of Littleton in Aroostook County now, and Neptune, the last gas giant along the side of the main solar system model, at about 30.6 miles from the center uh, at the Sun in Presque Isle. It's 21.3 inches in diameter, and Neptune also has a tenuous ring system, as do all the gas giants, although it's not depicted here. Neptune has 13 moons currently known. Its uh, atmosphere is comprised of hydrogen, helium, and methane, like most of the gas giants. And Neptune is unique in that its magnetic field is tipped over 45 degrees to its rotational axis. No one quite knows why that is, but uh, it, its magnetic field is definitely at a very odd cant from, uh, it's one of the most dramatic of all the planets. So I give you a little bit, first stop in little bit. the newly installed uh, dwarf model planets. We are at Pluto number one, as I like to call it. Uh, Pluto number one being, why are there two Plutos, you might ask? Because the planet Pluto comes in closer to the sun and further away, it's on a very elliptical orbit. This one is still in the town of Littleton like Neptune does, and it's actually only a mile or two down the road from the original uh, Neptune model, and it's only a few miles, maybe about 10 miles up the road from Holton, where the uh, next Pluto you'll see in the next video resides. But they put uh, Pluto, or Plutoid as it is, uh, last month. It is a member of the Plutoid family of planets. Pluto and Charon right up on its pedestal and in front of the museum, uh, the Southern Aroostook Agricultural Museum here in Hilton. We don't have to listen to the traffic here on the main solar system model. We are at Pluto number two. This is the original model of Pluto that's installed in the visitor center at Holton right off I-95. This model is put at 40.1 miles as opposed to the other one at 33 miles uh, from the uh, from Presque Isle up at Umpy where the sun was when we started our own journey. We're down here at 95 right now, I-95, right in the town of Holton along the main Brunswick border. Pluto itself looks kind of marble-like. It's about maybe an inch in uh, size, in diameter. Charon is even smaller than that. It's maybe about half an inch in diameter. Pluto actually has three moons. There are also two other new moons that have been discovered called Nix and Hydra that are not their tiny little asteroid moons. Uh, the New Horizons probe in the year 2015 will be flying by Pluto. Pluto is one of the last planets to be photographed. Uh, by then. We haven't actually had any space probes or anything go to Pluto yet. New Horizons was launched a few years ago. Uh, Pluto itself was discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tombaugh at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona. I've been there. It's been very neat. Uh, Pluto has a mass of 0 0.0022 
of uh, the Earth, very tiny. Uh, there's been a lot of debate and controversy about whether Pluto is a planet. The IAU's decision last month has rendered Pluto as a plutoid instead of an actual planet. So, Greetings from Astro Guys. We are on our way in search of the elusive planet Eris. Uh, we're currently going through Cary Plantation and we're south of I-95 by about 11 miles. Eris itself is about 54 miles south of I-95. We're going down Route 1, so it kind of gives you an idea how big the outer solar system in the Kuiper Belt really is. Eris and uh, its tiny moon Diasnomia were found in uh, the year 2005, and they sparked the whole controversy with the dwarf planet, Plutoid planet, not a planet thing that we've been blogging about for the past month. So we'll probably be there in about 40 minutes or so. It's a nice little country drive down through here. Uh, Eris definitely is going to be a tiny one. It's the last one I've never seen. And it's the only one I've never actually seen with a telescope before. So Eris will be kind of, uh, it'll be interesting. I don't know how many people actually journey down here just to see this tiny little one. But we're Astro guys. We're pretty thorough. We're going to get everything in there. So that is... Uh, it's Astro Guys on your own way to Eris. We are still driving. It's about a half hour from the time we shot in the last video. And we are 51.6 astronomical units, as in miles, uh, south of the interstate in I-95. So we should be coming up on Eris in Topsfield, though, get down here in Penobscot County, like any time now, very soon. It's, <laughs> it's, it's quite a haul down here. Like I said, it gives you an idea of the extent of the outer uh, solar system, the Kuiper Belt, and we're not even to the Oort Cloud yet, which isn't in the model yet, but that would probably be a several day drive to get out to, so still driving. We'll see you at uh, Topsfield here in a few minutes. Hopefully we don't get lost in the woods. We are here at the very last of the models. We are here at the newly installed Eris model down in Topsfield, Maine. It is so far away that we're not in Aroostook County anymore. This one is 94.6 miles south on Route 1, and it's a diameter of about one inch, and it's sitting right up on top of the pole. Eris itself was just discovered back in 2005, and it sparked a lot of the dwarf planet controversy. It was originally first known as UB313, and then it got the provisional name of Xena, and it wasn't long before Moon was found, and the provisional name of that, of course, was given as Gabrielle. And then IAU uh, gave it a more mythologically sounding name of uh, Eris, which is the goddess of discord from Greek mythology, and its tiny moon is named Diasnomia. Its mass is just a little bit more than Pluto, is 0 0.0028 times the mass of the Earth. So it's still very tiny, but the controversy came up, of course, to say, well, if it's bigger than Pluto and Pluto's a planet, shouldn't Eris be a planet as well? Well, it was a planet for a few months until it was demoted to dwarf planet. Now it is in the category of the Plutoid uh, status as far as the planet, along with uh, there are other Kuiper Belt objects like Quaor, um, Make Make, uh, Sedna, there's a lot of other ones out there that haven't made the official status yet as uh, Plutoids. But a, full, a cool fact about, well, UB-313, well, we already covered it, actually. It's uh, sparked the whole controversy. It was discovered in 2005. They think the rotation period is eight hours, and it takes 560 years for it to go around the sun. So it's going to take about half a millennium before it, it uh, gets one good orbit around the sun. And it varies quite a ways in and out. It's actually quite a ways out in its orbit right now. So I give you Eris, the last of the dwarf planets.